Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to another One Series video. Now, uh, if you've seen the video where I replaced the alternator, you will know exactly what this is all about. Uh, for those of you that haven't seen that, I'm going to show you. And what it is, is the fuel injectors. As you can see, it's horrible down here. It's all gammy, sticky, slimy, um, all of this. This is diesel. And what's happening is the diesel is escaping around the injectors. Now these are obviously high pressure injectors. Diesel engines work at high compression and there is a uh, copper ceiling washer at the base of each of these injectors. And what has happened in this, uh, in this case is they failed. So when they fail, what happens is that that allows um, the, the diesel to be forced out as the engine, uh, as that cylinder um, compresses the air. All it does is it pushes the diesel out and then ends up like this. Um, consequently, that can result in misfires. Obviously, there's a lack of compression, or sorry, not necessarily a lack of compression, but certainly lower compression. Um, and, you know, it, it could cause all sorts of running issues. So we need to fix it, not only because um, of the running issues, but also because it's absolutely, uh, you know, it's absolutely stinking down here. Um, there is a smell of diesel inside the cabin because obviously it's been drawn in through the, uh, through the filter. So, so yeah, we, we, we need to fix this as soon as possible. So um, that's what we're going to be doing in this video. So um, in order to get access at the, um, the injectors, there's a few things we need to remove. This scuttle panel here, um, which involves then taking off the covers for the brake master, um, the brake uh, master cylinder, the fluid reservoir, etc. Um, the ECM and all that sort of stuff. All those covers need to come off and that will give us access to um, cylinders three and four. Because as you can see, we can't get to them as they uh, as they currently are. So yeah, what we'll do, um, get started with getting those bits off, and then we'll uh, we'll get stuck into the injectors. Okay, so uh, let's get stuck into it. What we need to do first, as I said before, is start off here. These uh, these covers are held on. There's like a little clip at the front just here. Obviously, just be gentle. You don't want to snap it off. And then there's these little rubber tangs that hold everything together. And another clip at the back just there. And there we are. That's that one off. And that's where your, uh, that's where your brake fluid lives. Um, the connector here can be removed and we'll pull that off and that can live just there like so because um, obviously this whole panel is coming off so we don't want anything connected to it likewise on this side there is another connector for the bonnet switch which is a bit of a toughie to get off again we'll just pop the clips off they're like a like little grippy teeth you have to give it you give it a little tug and they come off um, it's not uncommon for these to actually snap, but in my instance, they were uh, they were okay. So again, on this side, the clips again. And there we go, and there's the, there's the box where the ECM lives. Okay, next, what we need to do is take the cover off the uh, pollen filter. There's two screws at the front, or there should be two. One's missing from this car for some reason, I'm not sure why. And then there's four at the back. One. Two. And then three. And Grab all the screws, get all them together, and then this will lift off along with the filters huh? and a nice collection of leaves. So, um, right, what we need to do next is we need to remove this bad boy. So, what I'll do is go and switch my tools because I need some different ones, and then we'll look at getting the scuttle off. Right then. 
to take this off, there's a couple of little clips just inside there. This one's actually already broken, but that is what we're pressing down on that little tang there. And we get a screwdriver in just like so. You can compress it and then do the same on that one. And it'll just slide nicely off. And there we go, that is that part done. Okay, each end, there's an eight mil bolt just here. The other end. And that's two. And it's literally a case of lifting it up at the front and the whole thing slides out just like so. And then there's a weather strip. That weather strip's absolutely bogging, so I'll probably take that off, give it a really good clean. Um, and there we go. As you can see now, we've got excellent access into cylinders three and four and as you can see all four of them are actually leaking in some de to some degree if anything i'd say four is probably the worst one but yeah they're all they're all bad and they're all need uh they all need sorting out so right let's get this to one side and then we can actually get stuck into the injectors themselves Right then, so with all that off, as I said, we've got uh, we've got pretty good access. Now, what I do want to stress before we actually move any further forward is that the battery is disconnected on the car. Last thing I want is obviously uh, anything electrical to uh, fire into live, uh, such as the fuel pump, for example. I don't want that happening. Um, so everything's disconnected. Likewise, I don't want to touch anything and electrocute myself because that would be bad. Um, what I've also done is given a you know like a quick hoover around um this area just to get as much of the dirt up as i can because i don't want to you know i don't i want to try and avoid um all that rubbish ending up in the cylinders through the uh, through the the openings that will be left when the injectors are out so uh, obviously i can only get so much because there's a lot of rubbish stuck to the diesel that's um that's been spilt uh, so I've, I've done the best i can okay next thing we want to do is we want to remove the fuel pipes these high pressure fuel lines these ones here these are 19 mil and obviously what you want to do is you want to make a make a note of the way they're rooted so obviously that one goes to number one but that one goes to number three and that one goes to number two so it's worth bearing in mind that they go that way around and obviously the orientation of them as well because otherwise when you come put them back together you'll be you'll be there for a little while trying to work out what's going on so it's not you know it's not a bad idea to take a little photograph with your phone or whatever just to refer to when you come put them back together now um another thing i will stress with these pipes is these are um they're, they're stressed so three removals and they should be replaced um, that's what it says in the tiz so if you remove these three times you should replace them with brand new items so that's that's basically what it is obviously that's entirely up to you um i would guess it's because of the, the ceiling faces um between the nuts and the components to which they attach that's my presumption um it doesn't actually go into any detail as to why um but yeah three three removals and they should be replaced so that's worth bearing in mind okay so 19 mil spanner got it right here and all we're gonna do is crack them off just like so that's that end and the same at the injector end just like that it really is that easy and then all we've got to do Unscrew them. Like so, same at that end, same at this end. And there we are, and that is the first one removed. Really is that easy. So I'll get the other three off and then uh, we'll get you back in and then we'll be looking at getting these clamps off each of the injectors. Okay, as you can see, we've got all four of the pipes removed. And if you actually look at them, those two are identical and those two are identical. So yeah, that's, uh, that's all four off and they are pretty me and I'm gonna give them a good clean up <laughs> along with all this diesel. Um, <clears throat> now, um, when I removed them, a tiny little bit bubbled out, but it, it wasn't anything worth worrying about. So, you, you know, um, you don't need to worry about having to catch diesel. There was literally not even, 
not even half a teaspoon um, got spilled. And obviously it's, it's covered in diesel anyway, so I'm not particularly precious about it. So what I need to do, put these to one side, then what we'll do is we'll move on to removing the return line and the electrical connections. Okay, the, uh, the sharp-eyed amongst you will obviously notice that I've just put a woolly hat on because it is flaming freezing out here and I want to keep my ears warm. Anyway, moving on, what we need to do now is remove the, uh, remove the return line. Now, these little clips here um, are a pain. As you can see, one's actually been snapped off here before with one of these little tangs. There should be another one like It should look like that one, to be fair. Um, so I'm not sure what's happened there. But um, in order to get them out, it's quite straightforward if you know how to do it. And what you need, a little tiny screwdriver just like that. And this little block here, just to put the screwdriver in there like so. And just gently prise it up and pull it up till it clicks. And then you do that to all of them. There we go. And the same for this one. And the last one. There we go. Oh, I'll put the screwdriver down. Now, now that's off, these will just pop off just like so. Be gentle because they are only plastic. Ouch, that hurt. They are only plastic and we don't want to want to go hench on them and uh, snap something because otherwise you'll have to replace it. And there we go. That is all four of them removed. Now, I have seen in the past that these um, are actually brass instead of plastic. Um, so they are available in brass if you wanted to um, get them. Uh, but uh, yeah, in this, uh, in this instance, I'm not gonna replace them because they're perfectly serviceable. There's nothing wrong with them. So now um, all we need to do for the injector is <coughs> remove the electrical connector, which are on tight. There we go. Number three. Come on. There we are. And four. And there we go. That is all of the electrical connectors. Next, what we need to do is remove these torch bolts. These are E10. Um, and they're not overly tight. I think they're, I think they're about 26 newton meters from memory. So they're not, they shouldn't be absolutely gaffed in there. Um, so yeah, that's what we'll do next. I'll go grab the tools I need and we'll get them out. Okay, so like I said, what we need to do next is remove this Torx bolt. As I said, it's an E10. It's on there really nicely. And then we'll crack it off. As I said, they're only done up to 26 newton meters. So I shouldn't imagine it's gonna be too difficult to remove. Um, but yeah. To be fair, I actually think we're gonna have some success getting this injector out because I'm pretty sure when I cracked this bolt, I saw the whole injector move, which is a good sign because it do like to be a bit of a pig to come out. Um, more on that soon. Um, we've got some tools in our arsenal to help us should we need to. Okay, so there's the clamp and there is the bolt with its washer. As you can see, it's it's a dished washer and it fits into this dished face here. Um, so yeah, we'll, uh, we'll put them on one side because we'll be reusing these. Um, I wasn't 100% sure actually whether these were stretch bolts or not, um, but uh, I couldn't find any evidence you know, to suggest that they were. Certainly not in the tiers and certainly not in the Hanes either. I couldn't find anything that said that they needed to be replaced, so we'll be reusing them. Um, yeah, so there we go. So now, I can see that the injector's moving side to side because you can you can see the diesel, you can see the diesel spillage moving. Um, so we may have some luck getting this one out. Um, well, we need to have luck getting them all out to be perfectly honest because they've all got to come out. But uh, some will probably put up a fight. Um, but yeah, we'll uh, we'll give it a bash. Now, before we um, get them uh, get them out, I just do want to say that um, you cannot mix them up. Each one of these, each one of these uh, injectors is coded to the DME into the cylinder in which it sits. The, the numbers on the top, these numbers 
are the serial numbers that you use to code the um, code the injector to the car. So if you replace an injector with a brand new one, you do need to code it. It's not a case of just putting the injector in and hoping for the best. Um, they do need code into the uh, to the car, so that's worth bearing in mind. So um, yeah, what we're going to do though, obviously, we're going to reuse these injectors after they've been given a bit of a bit of a clean. Um, so they do need to go back into the cylinder from whence they came. So that's worth bearing in mind. Um, anyway, right, what I need to do obviously is remove the clamp and the bolt from cylinders two, three, and four, and then uh, I'll bring it back and we'll have a go at getting the first of the injectors out of the cylinder head. Right then, uh, that is all the, uh, all the clamps and bolts out of all four cylinders, as you can see. Now, what we want to do is I want to see just how loose these, uh, these injectors are. Now, if you look down underneath the electrical connector on the actual body of the injector, you can see that there's some uh, sp uh, spanner flats, which obviously yeah, your, your trusty spanner will fit onto. I think they're 16 or 17. Um, I don't have a 16 or 17 mil spanner that'll fit on the body um, of those. However, um, where the clamps are, where the clamps actually act upon the uh, injector itself, these two flats here are 12 mil. And if you've got a thin enough spanner, you'll be able to get in there. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna attempt to just rotate them. And what I do wanna stress though, is that I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna force it because I don't wanna damage the, uh, this, the body of the uh, injector. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna gently try and twist the injector just give it a little little tug see if it'll turn and there we go as you can see oh that's beautiful actually that was actually not as tight as i expected it to be so there we go we we've managed to give it a little twist so that i'm fairly confident that'll come out quite easily so we'll try it with the next one now that one feels a lot lot tighter yeah that one that one doesn't want to move at all so we're gonna have problems with that one um, let's try number three you would expect seeing as they've been P and diesel out for so long that the uh, the sidewalls were well lubricated yeah, number three feels pretty pretty tight as well. I'm not going to get into number four, so we, we were lucky with one. Now, what we're going to have to do, we're going to have to use this tool. This is a slide hammer. And to, all you do is basically fit that onto the injector, just like so. And then you take the handle of the hammer, Screw that on there like so and then you screw that on there and then it's case of banging and banging away until the injector is withdrawn so we'll start with number one um because obviously i'm fairly confident that this one's actually going to come out anyway um let me just make sure we're all the way on and there we go. Right. So there we are. Look at that. And look at that absolute gammy mess. And it stinks. Absolutely stinks. So as you can see, um, the slide hammer made light work of number one, but we did manage to get it to turn with the spanner. So we kind of anticipated that, that would be the case. Um, obviously, we're going to drip a bit of oil and diesel all over the place so let me just wipe that down and there we go there is the first of the injectors removed now you can see on the body of the injector it's quite corroded and this is what's causing the others to be stuck um, we were quite lucky with this one that it came out as it did now one thing to note there should be a washer on the end of here so that washer is most probably stuck down the bottom there uh yeah is i can i don't know if you can actually see down the hole at all um hopefully if we turn the little give it a little bit of light you can you can see down the hole 
Um, yeah, and they, they, the washer is stuck at the bottom, so I do need to retrieve that. So that may prove to be a bit of a pain. Um, I may need to fashion some sort of tool to try and do that. Um, even, maybe, maybe I can hook it out with a scriber or something like that. But anyway, yeah, that's number one. So what I need to do is basically the same with the other three. Uh, and they are going to be a challenge. I know that they are um, because I couldn't rotate them with a spanner. So obviously, wish me luck. Um, now, what I need to do is uh, I do need to store these and they need to be stored upright. Um, if you lay them down, what you can do is you can allow air to be introduced into the amplifier inside the body of the injector. So they do need to be stood up. So what I've got is I've got a box, an old Amazon box. And all I'm going to do is drop it in there like that. One, two, three, and four. So I can pop this down now, and then when I get the other three out, they'll go in the box as well. Now here's the numbers that I was talking about. These numbers on the top, these are the ones that um, you use to code the injector to the cylinder. Um, I'm not going to go into that on this video because um, I am not going to be replacing any, so I'm not going to go into it in any detail. Um, but yeah, that's uh, that's worth bearing in mind. If you do need to re re move, um, sorry, replace an injector with a new one, you will need to code it to the car. So what I'm going to do, I am going to remove the other three injectors. I'm not going to film it because it's going to be a pig. I'm probably going to swear a lot, so I'll, um, uh, you know, I'll, I'll spare you that. Um, and then what I'll do, I'll bring you back in once they're out, and then we can give the top of the uh, the cam cover a bloody good clean because it's in need of it. See you in a bit. Okay, so as you can see, um, all four. Uh, injectors are removed and they came out fairly easily to be perfectly honest with you um, slide hammer made made pretty light work of them the other three didn't come out quite as easily as number one um, number one was a bit of a weird phenomenon that came out uh, easier than any injector I've ever pulled in my life to be perfectly honest but the other three came out you know pretty pretty easily using the slide hammer makes light work of it and, and to be fair that's that's what it's designed to do um, if you're trying to remove the injectors without one you are going to struggle um, and just make things more difficult for yourself okay that said um the copper washers the copper ceiling washers that we're actually going to be replacing um to stop them leaking um on all four of the uh on all four of the um ports I'm not really sure if you can actually see down in inside the hole or not. Um, I'm not really sure if you can. Don't know if it's going to show up on the camera. Um, but down the bottom, that's where the uh, the copper washer is, and all four of them are still stuck into their location. Now I haven't been able to get them out, and I don't have a tool at the moment in order to be able to get them out. Um, I kind of hoped that they would come out easily, and uh, you know, I played my cards and lost. So. What I need to do is go and uh, buy a tool. It's a pretty, pretty straightforward tool, to be honest. It's kind of like a, a rod with a, with a conical, conical end, but the conical end is also threaded, so you can put it in, turn it down, and then what it'll do is it'll thread itself into the washer, and then it's like a little slide hammer as well, it, and then you tap it out and the, the washer will come out. Uh, so I'll go and order one of those, but I've also made a dis an executive decision uh, on this too. <sighs> And I probably should have thought about this before, to be perfectly honest. What I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the cam cover and replace the uh, the gaskets. Now, there's one gasket that goes all the way around the outside of the cam cover, and there's another gasket on each of the ports um, for the injectors. Um, so I'll go and get one of those as well. Um, I'll pick those up. Uh, what I'll do, I'll leave the part numbers and any links for anything that I get um, for this in the description so that you can go and have a look. But obviously, I'm not going to have them right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to... Um, stuff some rags down each of the holes just to stop anything getting in there because it could be a few days before i get around to uh, getting back onto this um but uh yeah I don't, i'm not going to pull the cam cover now i will wait until i've got the stuff um and then we'll do it together and um, obviously i'll film the process so in order to get the cam cover off there's i think it's around about 30 might be 17 bolts actually all together including the ones on the fuel rail i can't remember off the top of my head obviously it'll become apparent um camshaft position sensor needs to be disconnected and then all the bolts need to be pulled in order to get the cam cover off and then we can replace the uh, replace the gasket but yeah that's what we'll do once i've got the stuff so obviously for me it's going to be a couple of days but for you guys it's going to be a matter of seconds so i'll see you in a bit okay welcome back um obviously for you guys it's been a matter of seconds for for me it's been a couple of days while i've been waiting for stuff to arrive so what i've got 
is I have a new gasket for the cam cover. More on that later. Um, but what I did need is the uh, injector seal pulling tool. And this is it. As you can see, all it is is conical at the end with like a screw thread. And it's effectively a slide hammer. So what we need to do is obviously we need to wind this into the copper washer down inside the injector port and then once it's gripped we should be able to bang it out it should be that that simple so let's uh let's have a go at the washer on injector number one all right then let's begin with uh with number one so if i pull my little my little bung out we have a little look down inside um i'm not sure how well that's showing up um, but the the washer is down there um, along with a bit of dirt you can see it's a bit dirty down there um, so what we need to do is we need to get our tool we need to wind it basically put it down into the washer this the, con the conical part of it goes into the hole in the center of the washer give it a little tap and there we go right we're in there now and give it a good screwing down till it stops and it's in there well and then oh it didn't come out that time it's moved though now i don't know if you can see i don't know if you can see that but it is actually it's not sitting flat now it's actually moved so i should be able to just pick that out um hopefully you can see that um I should just be able to pick that out with my scriber and hook it so i'll go grab a scriber and we'll be able to hook that one out And there we go. As you can see, that's pretty, pretty horrid. But that is the first one out. So that's all there is to it. So that tool obviously did what we needed it to. You can see inside where it, where it was gripping on. So obviously I've got the other three to do. Exactly the same method. Um, sometimes though, it, you know, sometimes it will come out with, on the end of the tool, and then you just un, uh, pull it off. Um, sometimes it'll do what it just did for me there whereas it came it unseated itself but then fell so that it was sitting like like that basically and all i had to do was hook it out so what i'll do next get the other three out and then uh, we'll move on to the next step okay there we go that is all four out uh, the first one was the only one that didn't come out on the end of the tool the other three all came out like that so so yeah, but you can see how, how dirty they get. Um, so what we do need to do is obviously I'm gonna check down the bores before we fit the injectors to make sure there's no dirt in there. And I'm gonna give it a good clean out. Now, what I'll probably do, once we've replaced the gasket, we've cleaned the cam cover off and all that good stuff, is I'll get a get my hoover with a bit of tube on the end. I'll put the tube down and just make sure that it sucks up anything loose so that it doesn't end up in the cylinders. Um, but we'll do, we'll do that later on. Anyway, next what we're gonna do is we're going to look at moving removing the cam cover but in order to do that um, obviously we need to remove the fuel rail now in order to remove the fuel rail we need to remove the inlet manifold because the pipe work comes from the um, high pressure fuel pump up to the fuel rail runs underneath the manifold and we obviously need to disconnect it so yeah that's what we're going to move on to next okay so before we actually move on to the job of uh, removing the in, uh, intake manifold which isn't a particularly challenging job it's pretty straightforward what we're going to do first is we're going to give ourselves a little bit of room to to work um now first thing we're going to do is i'm going to remove this this brace it's held at the back here under the skull with a 10 mil screw uh, sorry 10 mil bolt and at each end with an e14 torx socket um so i'll remove all of those get them out the other thing i'm going to do is i'm going to move this out of the way um down here we've got a vacuum line and all to remove this here it's held into the side it's a po well actually it's not on this particular car it should be held into this little clip on the side of the inlet manifold just pop it open pull it out and then there's a like a, pr a push switch and you push it there it is there that pushes down just like so and then that'll release it from this uh, and then that allows us to move it out of the way and then all, all i need to do then is remove the uh the the positive cable from the uh, from the top of the alternator and then this can just be moved out of the way so it's not over the top of this so i'll, I'll get this undone in a second i'll get these undone and then i'll bring you back in once all of this is out of the way 
Okay, as you can see, we've made ourselves quite a bit of space just by removing all that. I've also removed the, um, you know, the, the soundproofing that was down the back as well, the, the padding stuff. Just get it all out of the way and uh, gives us a bit more room to work. Okay, what we need to do next is we need to disconnect all the wiring that comes over the top of it. We've got the air intake, uh, temperature sensor, we've got boost control, um, boost pressure sensor, we've got um, a connector. This cable here comes all the way down underneath and connects to the throttle body, but you can't really get to the connector until the boost pipe's removed, but we can do that later. Um, if we just uh, remove these torque screws here, we'll be able to take this, which comes all the way down here and move that out of the way. Uh, yeah, so we'll be able to make ourselves quite a bit of space by disconnecting all of these things. So what I'll do, I'll disconnect everything, get everything out of the way, and then I'll bring it back, and we should be at a point where we can disconnect the throttle body um, from the boost pipe, and then remove the bolts on the manifold and then lift it out. Um, so yeah, give me, uh, give me five minutes to get all that done, and then we'll bring you back. Right, as you can see, um, everything is disconnected at the front here. Also, I've disconnected this because that will help us get the cam cover off later because it does run down the back here and we're kind of in a position to get the uh, the inlet manifold off. I've disconnected the boost pipe as you can see. I haven't disconnected the connector on the throttle body yet because I can't really get to it. It's a bit, um, you know, my hands are a bit big to get in there. So hopefully what I'll be able to do is just get in there once I've lifted it off. So to get the inlet manifold off, there's five bolts. One, two just down here between the uh, manifold and the alternator. Another one up here. Uh, another one in there, in this gap, and then another one there. So those five, and they are just tens. So I'll whip them out, and then we can get the uh, manifold off. One, two, three, four, and five. Okay, they're all loose. So I'll get the belt bolts out and then we'll get the manifold out. Right then, I've undone all five bolts and as you can see, they're actually captive. They don't, they don't come all the way out of the, uh, out, of the mod, out of the manifold. So once they're out, it'll take a good tug to get it off. And there we go, what are you trying to do? Ah, there we go. Because obviously we need to break the bond between the gaskets just to be able to get it out. And then we'll be able to feed the manifold out and I'll be able to get under here to the throttle body to disconnect it. Right, so what we need to do obviously is just feed this unit out and then obviously we'll, we'll, we'll be able to see where we're going with regards to this fuel pipe. Right, there we are, that is the inlet manifold out and as you can see now we've got access to the pipe here from the high pressure fuel pump. So now we can crack this off and disconnect it from here and then we'll be able to take the fuel rail off allowing us to remove the valve cover. As you can see what I've done is I've um, put some workshop tissue in all the ports, all, all four of the, um, all eight of the inlet ports and um, the EGR port as well. Uh, just to stop any of this dirt that's knocking around here getting, getting uh, finally, you know, falling into the into the inlet tracks and finding its way into the cylinder through an open valve. Um, I'll give all of this is clean before we reassemble anyway uh, and obviously we'll be using brand new gaskets on reinstallation of the inlet manifold as well because the, the the ones that were beyond there will be nice you know they'll all be flat and hard and all that sort of stuff so we'll we'll fit brand new ones before we uh, before we reassemble anyway moving on what we want to do is disconnect the fuel line from here we may lose a little bit of diesel and again the same up here Thank you. 
and there we are. Now, you can see it's in this little grommet just here. And there's like a little, in between ports two and three, you can see there's like a little rubber sleeve where it sits in between. And then all we need to do is just guide it, guide it out. Um, the cabling for the glow plugs does go over the top of it, but you can, you can either disconnect the glow plug or you can just maneuver it around it. It's entirely up to, entirely up to you, whichever you're more comfortable with. You can get it around, it's not difficult. There we go. So there we are, that is the main pipe from the pump up to the fuel rail removed. So we'll stick this to one side. Remember what I said, obviously you can use these three times. Um, once it's been removed three, once it's been removed for the third time, you have to replace it. So um, that's obviously uh, worth bearing in mind. Okay, now we're in a position where we can remove the fuel rail to get at the cam cover. Okay, so fuel rail then. Uh, two, four, six bolts holding it in place and then we've got the return line just up here, press the button in and it pops off and as you can see, we already disconnected the, uh, the electrical connector earlier. So if I um, get those uh, six bolts undone, clamps up and put them down there and then there is the fuel rail now it's quite heavy so it's a lot heavier than it looks um, so there we are that is the fuel rail we can give that a good clean before we reinstall it because it's absolutely filthy but there we go so now there is nothing on top of the cam cover that is stopping us from removing it. Um, I don't think that the, the uh, camshaft position sensor needs to be removed in order to remove the cam cover. Um, but well, I, I don't believe it does, but if it does, then we can uh, remove it. It's only a little, a little torque screw, but um, yeah. So yeah, next we'll, uh, we'll get the, uh, the bolts removed holding the cam cover to the cylinder head. Okay, so um, in addition to the bolts that we've got in the cam cover, there's a few that are down the side here as well. We've got a few other things we've got to disconnect. Now, there's a bolt there which holds this metal plate on, which has got all these vacuum lines and a few, um, you know, a few electronic gizmos and stuff on the side that um, do need moving out of the way. Now, there's one bolt there, there's a Torx bolt there, but there's also a couple more which are under here, and I'm not going to get the camera in to be able to show you. Um, what I'll try and do is, I'll try and find a picture online and I'll try and put that up or if failing that I'll get one out of the TIS or, or the Haynes manual and I'll put that up so you can see what I'm talking about. Um, so I'll get them out because uh, I'm not going to be able to film it because there just isn't any room. The other thing I need to disconnect is the breather hose at the front here. Just pop that off, move that out of the way so that's out of the way. Yeah, so we've got a few a few bolts, we've got one, two, three, four, five, another one down there six six seven eight nine ten eleven i think there's another one there 12 13 14 i think there may be another one at the back there so 15 maybe 14 or 15 um but once i got this out of the way hopefully it'll become a bit more apparent where everything is and then uh yeah we'll uh we'll be able to get stuck into it so i'll get all of this off um out of the way and then we can look at these 
Okay, so what I've actually managed to do, uh, instead of uh, getting to that bolt and that bolt, and then obviously that bolt, and then taking the whole thing off as well, what I've done is I've removed all these units off of there. They just sit on these studs, um, held on with these little nuts. Um, so yeah, there's two on each. Uh, well, sorry, two on each, two on that one, two on um, that one but one on that one, as you can see. So yeah, I've got those off and then you can see these bolts. So that one, that one, that one, and then this whole plate's out and then we're uh, we're ready to start on the valve cover. So I'll get these three bolts out, move this plate out of the way and then we're golden. So let's crack on. Right then, we are now in a position to be able to uh, undo the bolts on the cam cover. The only other thing that I do need to remove is the, uh, the cap for the um, oil filler and that will just pop off just like so. Pop that to one side. And then the flange here is held in with a couple of little clips all the way around its circumference. One, two, three, just like that, and they clip on under here. So there we go. Now, as you can see, we've got access to that bolt and that bolt having removed that. And then there's one, two, three, four. Um, I'm not sure if there's one at the back there, possibly, but we'll have a look at that in a moment. And then there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, down there as well um yeah and i think that's it so one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen yeah i reckon it's fourteen so we'll get them out and um, we'll start from the outside um and work inward so those those two then those three then those two then those two and so on and so on and you get the idea get them all out get the cover off It's them all cracked off. All I've got to do now is wind every single one out. See you in a sec. Right, okay, um, as you can see, all the bolts are out, and as you, also as you can see, they're captive, they don't um they don't come all the way out, which is handy because then you don't drop any. Um, one thing I will point out, there was another three at the back here, which I didn't notice. One there, one just here where my middle finger's touching now, and then there's another one here at the back just behind this tab right at the bottom um, so yeah if you miss if we miss them you won't be able to get it out um, another thing i didn't mention is the glow plug cable and has these little these little clips here these little clips which just clip onto the bottom of it so you just pop just pop them off just a little screwdriver and a little tap and they'll they'll drop off um, they're like those little grippy ones but yeah that's uh, that's it so now we should be in a position to get this sucker off um, i don't believe that anything else We'll be holding it on and there we go that is the cam cover removed now as you can see in here everything looks nice and clean um, all the uh, all the cam lobes are good um, we did drop a little bit of dust there so i'll get i'll give that a clean before we uh, before we reassemble um, but yeah well, everything's nice and good there's no there's no scoring on any of the camshafts at all they're they're all absolutely lovely but yeah these um these gaskets here i wouldn't be surprised if these have failed and um whilst we're uh, whilst we're at it we you know we might as well go to the effort of changing this uh, while the injectors are out anyway it's not much more work to do that so let's bring this over here um obviously it's absolutely filthy so what i'm going to do i'm going to get this in my parts washer and to, to clean all of this off and it will look brand new again um i will take the camshaft position sensor out for that um, i'm not gonna uh, i'm not gonna put that through the washer um, but yeah let's um have a look at the gasket yeah they're all they're all a bit plasticky <sighs> yeah they're uh, they're all a bit plasticky and they're not rubbery like the brand new ones are that one doesn't want to come out come on there we are and then obviously we've got the one around the outside as well and, and that feels like plastic it doesn't even feel rubber anymore 
Um, in fact, it's that hard, I can't even grip it. So yeah, that's that's more like plastic than rubber, so I wouldn't be surprised if that was gonna breach at some point anyway. Yeah, yeah. Look, look how plasticky it is. So yeah, that's, that's done, right. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, get this in the parts washer, give it a good clean. Next time you see it, it should look brand new. I'll take the uh, camshaft position sensor out and then uh, get on with that. Right then, I've uh, cleaned the uh, the camshaft cover as best as it's gonna get anyway um, in the uh, in the parts washer and that, that'll do. Um, I'm not gonna go over the top with it, but obviously it's just better than it was. Um, as you can see also, I've cleaned the mating faces for the gaskets. Uh, the profile ones around the injectors and also the uh, the mating face on the cylinder head now i'm going to fit the uh, the gasket that is the part number if you uh, if you're interested uh, obviously genuine bmw one pop it open and see what we got okay so first off we've got the profile ones which literally just Hop into the slot there. A little bit stubborn, get in there. They're nice and thick as well, they? they're a lot better than the ones that came that came off. You can see they're sitting proud, so they'll uh, they'll make a good seal. when we lower the cover onto the cylinder head to make sure that they don't fall off because obviously that'll be bad and we'll have a leak hopefully they'll stay in place you can use a little dab of rtv just to use them in place uh, you know just to stick them in place if you so wish um, but you don't need rtv um, to aid the gaskets whatsoever uh, on this on this application okay so now what we need to do is we need to orientate this the right way around and make sure we've got it correct. Now that is for the breather, so that's there, but it needs to go. Uh, I think it's inside out at the moment. So there we go, yeah. So it was actually inside out. We just needed to orientate it correctly. And there we are. So now we can see it's fitting nicely. And again, this is sitting well proud of the housing. You can see how how thick the gasket is. It'll, this will make an absolutely lovely seal. And it's these little, these little, these little nobbles there that help retain it in its slot. They just grip, grip the channel, and hopefully, if turn it upside down, it should all stay. So there we go. It's all in position. Right. What we can do now is get it feared to the cylinder head. We need to make sure we do. Make sure all of this stays out of the way the glow plug wiring doesn't get trapped either and this plate here stays out of the way okay so what we can do now is gently get it over the chain there we are and then I should Checking all the way around, making sure nothing's in the way. A little wiggle, and I think we're there. Pull the profile gaskets 
are all good and we're all on okay so what I'm gonna do just to make sure she stays in place just get a couple of the bolts started just up to touch and there we go so she's back on the gasket's all good all I need to do now is go around and uh, do up all the bolts what I'm going to do get them all down to touch and then they're torqued on 10 newton meters on these uh, on these bolts so yeah I'll, uh, I'll get all that done obviously talking from the outside inwards so that side that side that side that side there um, and then you get the idea so I'll, uh, I'll get all of that done get them all talked up and then we'll bring you back okay there we are that is the cam cover refitted all the bolts are torqued down i've even taken the liberty of refitting the flange and the, and the oil filler cap i haven't put the um uh, camshaft position sensor in yet because that's going to get a new gasket um, i'll do that shortly so all we need to do now really is reassemble the car obviously we've got to put all this back on and all that good stuff so um yeah that's what we'll do next we'll, we'll start by uh, reassembling everything and then what we'll do we'll get to a point where we're going to refit the injectors and then we'll take the steps necessary to ensure that the injectors are fitted correctly so yeah that's uh, that's where we're going to go next Okay, the first of the gaskets we're going to replace is the one on the, uh, the camshaft position sensor, and here it is. That's the part number that you need right there. So if I just pull the old one off. And replace it with the new one out of the bag. And there we go. And then we can just pop it into position. Add its screw and tighten it down. And there we go, that's that done, nice and easy. Right, next thing that we're gonna achieve is fuel rail fitment. So we'll get the fuel rail in position because we do need to run the, the hard line from the fuel rail down to the fuel pump before we can fit the intake manifold. So that'll be a good place to start next. So we'll get the fuel rail out. I've already given it a nice clean so it looks nice and uh, nice and refreshed. Lay it in position, put the clamps on um, loosely so that it's got a bit of lateral movement because obviously we need to be able to move it in order to position it to get, correctly get the lines all connected, including the ones that go to the injectors. So yeah, that's where we'll go next. Hard line from the fuel pump to the fuel rail. Okay, so here we have the uh, the fuel rail. Uh, as you can see, I've given it a bit of a bit of a clean to uh, get all the all the dirt and grime off of it. Um, obviously, it's not perfect, but it's adequate. Get each of the clamps on. Make sure it's obviously orientated the right way. Um, now I'm going to get the clamps on. I'm not going to tighten them because we don't know exactly whereabouts this needs to be um, obviously it will give, allow us to rotate it ever so slightly to get all the hard lines on obviously starting with starting with this one now it's going to basically go on um, kind of like that um, it's under here and here is the connection from the from the high pressure fuel pump and it's going to go on kind of like so but it does need to go under the wiring for the glow plugs and in between cylinders two and three there is a slot and this rubber this rubber bit here on the pipe does sit inside that slot and then this grommet obviously sits in there in its space on the side of the uh, cam cover and that's roughly where it's gonna where it's gonna align so as you can see it's gonna go to that point on the fuel rail so um, yeah what we'll do is probably get that one on and started I reckon and then we can maneuver it so that it gets into the right place and allows us to connect it at the high pressure fuel end uh, high pressure pump end should I say 
get it in there like that and just spin it on and then just make sure that everything's located where it needs to be things like this little grommet here just nudge it into place there we go and the fuel pipe is now sitting exactly where we wanted it to be so that is pretty much the correct orientation for everything so what i need to do now is get my spanners out and just nip up these two unions as tight as i can tight as i can get them basically so i'll get them two tightened up then because i'm happy with the orientation now because we know it's in the right place because of this pipe i can now tighten down these six bolts here and uh, talk them to spec okay so uh, now we've got the fuel rail on we've got this hard line down at the fuel pump um, installed we can now uh, set about reinstalling the inlet manifold now as you can see the inlet manifold is absolutely bogging and coked up a little bit now i'm not going to bother giving this a clean at the moment um I, I, i'm actually thinking about replacing this in the near future with a, with a new one anyway um so i'm not going to be overly concerned about it um but what i do need to do is replace all the gaskets so there's four gaskets one on each inlet track for each cylinder and then there's another one just on here for the uh, for the egr um and as you can see that's certainly seen better days but i do have the replacement one here in this bag and here is the details you need if you need to get a new one and again i've got four new inlet manifold gaskets so let's pop all of these off One thing I will point out with these is it is possible to try and fit them on upside down. If you try and fit them like that, you'll notice there's a little tab here which sits in this slot. So just make sure that they're going the right way up. And that obviously wanted to teach anybody to suck eggs. And there we go, that's them all installed. Now, lastly, a seal for the EGR, a nice silver one pop that over and there we go that is the inlet manifold ready to install now going back to all the dirt on here this is caused by the EGR valve obviously this car still has its EGR so that's the reason why it's all sooted up like this it you know recirculates exhaust gases back through the inlet manifold to be reburnt again as a bit of a um, environmental measure um, I will be doing a video on EGR removal at some point. I've been planning to do it for ages. I've had the kit for ages. I've just never got around to it. But uh, yeah, uh, at some point in the future, that will be coming. So uh, yeah, anyway, back to the matter at hand. Let's get this inlet manifold installed back onto the block. Okay, so here we are, ready to install the inlet manifold. Now, obviously all of this is in, in the way. I do need to get it underneath it all. And there we are. Now if there's a vacuum line down here. We do need to avoid trapping that to make sure that it's well tucked out of the way because we don't want to trap that between the manifold and the head. Um, and what I'm going to do also is this cable here, the connector, this connector here goes onto the throttle body here and it's actually easier to connect it up while it's in this kind of position and it's not um you know not bolted down because access is a little bit limited so so yeah what i'm going to do is wrestle with this get it into get it into position get that connector connected up as i said and then um, we'll, I'll bring it back in and we'll get it bolted down a little bit. Okay, as you can see, we've got the, uh, the inlet manifold in a position. I've got that connector on the throttle body connected. Um, and one th other thing I do want to point out is I actually disconnected this vacuum line and brought it over the top. Um, 
I can't remember whether that was the way it was rooted before, but that's the way it's going to be rooted now because there isn't really any room underneath. Um, you know, there's no real gap for it to go through underneath. So I'm pretty sure it was going over the top anyway. So that's where I've rooted it. Um, now, all we need to do is uh, bolt it down. And obviously it was just the five bolts, one there, one there, one in here, and then one there, and then one in the center. Uh, and they're done up to 22 newton meters. So it's just a case of getting them all started on the head every single one and then once they're done up to touch I'll come back round and torque them so I'll get on with that get them all tightened and torqued and then I'll bring it back in and we'll move on to the next step Right, that is the inlet manifold installed onto the cylinder head so it's all uh, all torqued up, all good what I need to do now is go around, connect things like the uh, the, um, the pipe work up to the throttle body, and then I need to go around and connect everything up back to all of its, um, you know, all the sensors, all the wiring, all of this. Obviously, this is for the in full injector, so that won't be getting connected yet. But all of this can be reconnected um, to everywhere that it was disconnected from. Obviously, this is the point where you, you know you needed to pay attention to where you're pulling things off of. Um, the uh, the cabling for the fuel injectors will obviously sit down here and bolt up to these two points here but it does go underneath that rail so I'll, I will have to feed that back through um, later on uh, it was uh, it was a bit of a pig to get out but it came, you know it came out it was uh, it wasn't too too terrible and it does clip into there like so so yeah um, all I do need to do now is obviously carry on with that I'll get on with that I don't want you know, I'm not going to film that because I'll be here for 20 minutes and you'll just sit, sit there watching me clip, you know, connectors onto, onto things. Um, so I'll get all of them done. I'll get them all connected up. I'll get the things like this bolted up. It's just two screws that hold it onto the inlet manifold just here. Um, and uh, yeah, it'll, uh, it'll all be good. Um, so yeah, that'll take me probably about 10, 15 minutes. So I'll get on with that and then uh, I'll bring it back in and then we can look at actually uh, installing the injectors, which was the job that we started doing this for in the first place so uh yeah i'll see you all very shortly okay so as you can see um, everything is all connected the only thing that isn't is the stuff associated with the fuel injectors uh, this bit and obviously this uh, this section here is goes over the top of the engine and we'll reinstall that later on once uh, once everything's done so now what we're going to do is we're going to actually move on to um, the injectors uh, themselves which is the reason why we started this job in the first place now um, obviously we've removed the um, we've removed the the injectors and their copper washers which um, which seal them against the cylinder head um, but what we do need to do is we need to clean um, the mating faces between the injectors the uh, copper washers and the, and the head itself um, I'm not sure how well it will show up on camera um, but obviously at the bottom of the hole you've got the hole where the injector tip fits through into the cylinder and around the outside of that it'll be covered in carbon especially where it's been leaking all that carbon will have come out and it'll be sat there Caught, uh, you know creating a bit of a mess and if I was to just put a new washer directly on top of that all that will happen is it they'll leak again so what we need to do is we basically need to remove all that carbon and cut a nice new seat for the injector to sit on now it sounds quite um, drastic but all we're doing is removing the carbon um, and um, any burrs or anything around the, uh, the, the, the mating faces so that the washer has the best chance to do um, to, you know to make a, a, a as best a seal as it will uh, and to do that what we're going to do is we're going to use this tool now this is a me mechanic set as you can see it's got a nice little m m badge on it um, it's not a bmw specific uh kit by any stretch um you can use this for all all kinds of diesel engines um for the uh for this engine we're going to use the 17 by 17 um size and what i need to do is install it onto here and there's a little allen key in the uh, in the kit and as you can see there's a little flat face there and all we need to do is just 
pop it into position and then tighten the tighten it down like so there we go simple as that so pop that down to one side and as you can see all we're going to do is we're going to drop that down and we're going to with a socket on the end we're going to basically ream the uh, the face now this these are really really sharp if i run my finger across it i can feel it's quite sharp now one thing we don't want to do is we don't want all that carbon and any aluminium shavings that we remove there won't be a lot we're not we're not actually you know we're not leaning on it all we're doing is making a nice face um, we don't want any of that falling at the cylinder so what i'm going to do is i'm going to put a little bit of grease around the cutting face and that grease will catch anything that we remove um so yeah i'll go and grab a go and grab my general purpose grease and then we can uh, we can set to it okay here i have my general purpose grease and i'm just going to slather a bit around the cutting face um, we're not aiming to lubricate anything what we're actually aiming to do is just capture anything that we uh, that we remove as part of the process okay so what i can do now is simply drop that down into the cylinder and I can feel a little bit of resistance, so we're good. Okay, so what I've got here now, 19 mil socket and a T-bar, and all I'm gonna do is put that on and just gently turn it around. You're not, you know, you don't need to lean on it. All you're doing is just giving it a little ream just to clean off the face to give the washer the best chance of seeming. Okay, let's pull her out, and there you go. We've got quite a lot of gunk and horrible carbon there. It's pretty black and disgusting. If I'll give it a look inside. It does look quite clean. There's a bit of grease, but obviously what I'll do, I'll give that a little clean out. Um, but yeah, as you can see, we've removed quite a bit of carbon. So yeah, what I'll do, give that a clean out, and then I need to do exactly the same thing to the other three, the other three, um, the other three injector ports uh, and then we'll be in a position whereby we can uh, we can fit the injectors so I'll uh, get on with that and I'll see you guys in a sec okay so um, that is all of the seats cut and um, all cleaned out um, hopefully you can see down the bottom of there it's nice nice shiny nice and shiny and silver and not all black and horrible like they were <laughs> Um, and that's because obviously I've, uh, I've cleaned them, cut them, uh, and we're all good to go with brand new uh, copper washers on the bottom of the injectors. So, as I said before, the, uh, the injectors need to go back into the ports in which they, uh, they came from. As you can see, I've got them numbered, one being this one, four being the far end. Um, on the injectors themselves, this little number here on, on this particular injector, Bravo Romeo 8 Alpha Delta India Foxtrot. That is the, um, the value that needs to be coded to the DME if you exchange, um, an ex you know, put, fit a new injector. That's the, that's the value that needs to be coded, but I'm not going to be going into that in this video because I'm not exchanging any. Um, as you can see, if I look at number two, for example, the number is different. Um, they are they are differently numbered Okay, so yeah bear that in mind make sure that they go back into the uh, ports which they came from Otherwise you'll have to do some uh, you'll have to do some coding. We, we're not going to go into that in this video Okay, so what I need to do go grab my uh, copper washers and we can uh, we can start fitting the injectors back to the cylinder head Okay, here are the uh, here are the copper washers as you can see on the inside They've got like little dimples, which will help them um, grip onto the injector while you fit it. If I grab one out and grab number one injector and then fit it onto the bottom, there is a little bit of resistance. It's not too much. Um, however, if you find that they don't fit, what you can do is just pop a little dab of grease around the bottom, pop it back on and the grease will hold it in place. Don't worry about the grease, the grease will burn off um, when, we, uh, when we run the car up. So what we need to do now is obviously we need to, uh, we need to fit the injector into its port. Simply pop it down like so. 
and we should be good. Um, obviously, we need to factor in the orientation of the uh, of the cabling um, and uh, and all that good stuff. It's uh, that way round. It sits like that, and you can kind of see where the connectors want to uh, want to fit. So bear that in mind. Um, but what they uh, what they do have on them is, if I look at it like that, that's kind of the orientation. You've got the flats here, which is what the um, the clamps for the injector fit against, and obviously they need to they need to bolt into these holes here. So make sure that the clamps. Um, are going to be in the right position by orientating the injectors as best we can. So what I'm going to do is um, I'll fit the washers to two, three and four, get the injectors in and then we'll look at getting the clamps um, around the injectors and then we can look at getting them clamped down. Okay, that's all uh, All four of the injectors in with their uh, with their new washers um, all sitting nice. Uh, as you can see, they're still, you know, they're still able to be rotated and what have you. So all we need to do now is we need to clamp them down. Um, I've given the bolts and the clamps a little bit of a clean because they were a bit bogging as well. Um, but here you can see we've got these four bolts holding the um, that hold the cam cover on. And all that happens is these clamps sit so that they meet these little flats either side of the, uh, the union for the fuel line. Um, and then the back end here sits on top of that bolt, just like so, and then all we need to do is drop the bolt in and wind it down. Now these are torqued to 26 newton meters, which isn't a massive amount, but obviously it's enough um, to apply the necessary force for these injectors. Get it up to touch first. We go right. Draw wrench is set to 26. And there we go. That is number one injector installed. So obviously what I'm gonna do is rinse and repeat for cylinders two, three, and four. And then uh, yeah, we can look at then um, buttoning up things like the uh, the cable in for the injectors and then the each of the pipes for each one from the fuel rail uh, so we've got a fair uh, you know we've got a fair bit to do but uh, yeah I'll um, I'll get them clamped down and then we'll look at the uh, we'll look at the rest rest of the job um, I think what I'll probably aim to do is get this fed through underneath this pipe before we look at getting the, the rest of the pipes on um, because I think that may well be the best plan forward because I think the, the I'm pretty sure the yeah in fact yeah they will the pipes will go over the top of it so uh, yeah so uh, yeah I'll see you all in a second once I've uh, once I've got these three clamped down so there we are that is all four injectors all clamped down so what we're going to do now is feed this bad boy through underneath. roughly the right place and then we can plug them all in and then the little screws I'll hold it in position and just like so so I'll go and button them up in a moment and uh, tighten them down okay what we need to do next is obviously we need to sort out the pipe work from the fuel rail to each injector. Now obviously this is a bit of a pain because you need to get the right one to the right injector um, and it's helpful if you take a picture. If you've got a manual, there's manuals, uh, there's pictures in the manual uh, that show you which, you know, which port goes to which one and it helps you um, to uh, get the right pipe in the right place otherwise you'll find that you'll, you'll have a couple that are connected and then others that aren't and it also helps you get the pipe work the right way around. So um, yeah, uh, I'll go and grab all the pipes, make sure that they're nice and clean, and then we'll uh, we'll look at installing those next. Okay, so we're now in a position to uh, to fit the pipe work for the uh, for the fuel injectors from the fuel rail. Now we've got two 
there's actually four pipes, but there's two different ones. And yeah, there's two of these and two of these. Um, so they need to go into the right places. Now, injectors three and four have these ones fitted. And injectors number one and two and these ones fitted. So, um, as you can see, number three needs to come from this point on the rail. And not this point as you would expect. And then number two comes in here, just like so. And then all we gotta do, screw them all down. So what I'll do, get them all up to touch, get my 19mm spanner out and give them a good FT in. Because obviously we don't want them to leak, so yeah, we'll make sure that they're nice and tight. Or FT, as I said. There we are, right, they are all up to touch. So all I need to do now is go around and give them a good, a good tight and make sure they're nice and tight because we don't want them to leak. Okay, so I'll, uh, I'll bring you back in a second and then we'll move on to the next step after I've tightened all of these up. Okay, that is uh, all four of the, uh, the fuel pipes installed. Now what we need to do is fit the returns and what we'll do, pull them all up like so. And then po pop them onto each injector, making sure they're fully seated. And then push them down like so and there we go that is that done right last thing we need to do um, before we can start this car is we need to connect all of this back up now this vacuum line simply plugs in there and there you heard it click in place and then this one comes over to the alternator Pull the nut off. Get that in place. Put the nut back on. And then spin it down. And then obviously I just need to tighten it up. So I'll go and get my spanners out and uh, my sockets and stuff and do that in a second. Um, there is a little screw to go on there just to hold that in position, which I've got just down here. I'll get that on in a sec. But yeah, we are now in a position to try and start the car. So um, there's obviously a few things we need to do in order to start this car because obviously the fuel rail is empty of fuel and the fuel um, isn't gonna be this side of the high pressure fuel pump. So we'll, there'll be a few things we'll do in a minute, but I'll discuss those in a second. Obviously I'll just get this tightened up and uh, yeah, then we'll uh, we'll look at that. I'm, I'm not gonna bother with the, the strut brace for the moment. I'll leave that until, you know, that can be done by the end. There's only a couple of bolts holding it in place. Um, but you guys know how to do that anyway. Okay, so yeah, tighten that and then uh, I'll speak to you in a sec and we'll hopefully get this bad boy started up. Okay, so the car is now assembled as far as it needs to be in order to, uh, you know, in order to, to start it. All I need to do is reconnect the battery, which I haven't done yet, but I'll do that in a second. So um, what we need to do is we need to get fuel basically from the tank all the way up to each of these four fuel injectors. Now, getting it out of the tank 
up to the back of the block where the high pressure fuel pump sits is pretty straightforward because there's a lift pump in the tank which does that. Um, it pushes it through the fuel filter up to the high pressure fuel pump. The problem is you've got to get the fuel through the high pressure fuel pump um, all through this pipework, through, fill the fuel rail and then down into each of the injectors before the car will, um, will, you know, will fire up. Now that's going to be uh, a bit of an epic because it, and it'll probably take a while. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to um, turn on the ignition three times just to prime the, the fuel uh, up, to the, uh, up to the high pressure pump from the lift pump, uh, just on and off without starting the car, uh, you know, without cranking it, just on and off and that should push the fuel up to that point. Then it's going to be a case of just cranking. Um, and it, the, the system will bleed itself. You don't need to draw fuel through with a vacuum on these. Um, it will it will fire eventually. It's just the question is when. Um, so I'm going to I'm going to crank it in stages. Probably about 20 seconds each. You don't want to you don't want to just keep the button held down because there's potential to damage your starter motor. Because starter motors aren't actually designed to just spin and spin and spin forever. They're designed to give a short burst and then. Um, uh, and then obviously uh, switch off. Likewise, the batteries in these aren't designed to give sustained uh, power in that manner either. So you need to rest your battery slightly. So what I'll do, I'll, I'll crank it in like 20 second um, intervals, um, let it rest for uh, 30 seconds and then try again. And I'll just keep doing that till such time as it fires up. Um, and obviously uh, what we'll do is we'll just keep you looking at the engine till such time as it uh, as it fires and then I'll, I'll edit it down a bit and I'll let you know how long it actually took to do it uh, I'm not gonna you know if it takes me 15 minutes to get it started I'm not gonna sit, leave you sitting here watching it for 15 minutes I'll, uh, I'll just obviously introduce it at the point when it fires up and then I'll tell you how long it actually took okay so yeah bear with me I'll get the battery um, battery connected and then we'll uh, we'll, uh, we'll give it a bash Right then, battery is connected. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to put the key in. I'm going to leave my feet off the uh, off the pedals. Let's turn the stereo down. And all I'm going to do, start the uh, press the start button. And off again. And on. And off. And on. Okay, so what that will have done is that will have um, pushed fuel up from the tank up to the uh, up to the high pressure fuel pump. Now what I need to do is um, I need to obviously crank the car and push the fuel from that pump down to the injectors through the fuel rail. So this is where it's going to be a little bit of a, a little bit of a, an epic. So obviously I need to put my foot on the clutch now put the key in and now I'm just going to press the button and uh, allow it to crank so I'm going to do it in 20 second increments as I said and what I'll do um, eventually when it fires uh, you'll, you'll, you'll see it so I'm not going to uh, keep you guys watching all this time we'll just uh, skip forward to the point where I actually get it started and I'll let you know actually how long it took <laughs> Okay, so I've cranked it a few times there, and uh, I'm going to let it rest for a second, and then we'll give it another go in a minute. But anyway, um, I'll uh, I'll leave you watching the engine until it fires, and then uh, I'll catch up with you in just a sec.
Okay, so there we go. Um, it actually didn't take as long as I expected it to. Um, it probably, probably six or seven times I tried to crank it. Um, but as you can see, she's running. And she's running all right. It's running as well as I would expect a uh, you know a four banger diesel to uh, to run anyway. But I'm not seeing any evidence of any diesel coming out of any of the injectors. Uh, I'm not seeing any leaks from any of the pipes. Again, which is obviously excellent. So yeah, I'm uh, I'm quite happy with that. What I do need to do is obviously I need to put a bit of charge back in the battery. So I'm going to leave it running for a second, let it get up to temperature. Um, which will probably take a little while because obviously being a diesel they take a little while to get up the temperature but yeah I'm, uh, I'm incredibly happy with this obviously because I've um, also replaced the gasket around the uh, cam cover I'm also needing to check leaks um, around that as well to make sure there's nothing leaking between the uh, between the head and the cover um, but yeah we're so far so good I think Okay, I am incredibly happy. There's, uh, it's been running for a good 10 to 15 minutes and there's no evidence of any leaks whatsoever and it actually sounds incredibly healthy. So I'm very, very happy um, with what we've achieved here. Um, the, the, the problem that we set out to fix is fixed. And obviously we've had the bonus of, uh, uh, you know, replacing the, uh, the valve cover gasket at the same time. So uh, yeah, I'm very, very happy uh, with, uh, with what we've achieved. Anyway, what I need to do is obviously get on with putting the rest of the little bits on, like, you know, the, the cabin filters and all that sort of stuff. I'm not going to bother filming that because it's pretty noddy stuff and it's literally just, re you know, refit is reverse of removal, you know, uh, that old uh, that old adage. Um, and then, uh, yeah, just putting the, uh, the, uh, the acoustic cover on, as they call it. And, uh, yeah, we're, 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 we're done. The job is done. So, guys... Um, Hopefully you enjoyed this. Uh, if you did, then please leave a uh, leave a comment below. Um, join me over uh, on the socials as well if you wish. Um, I'll leave a link to uh, to them in the uh, in the description. Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. You can uh, you can jump over there and uh, hit me up. Um, we uh, we have a little bit of a laugh uh, in those groups. You know, there's uh, some funny stuff going on. Some people come out with some uh, some classic jokes. So yeah, head over there and. Uh, Hopefully uh, we'll uh, we'll see you there. Um, I've just started a Patreon. Uh, if you want to get involved with that, then again, I'll leave the link in the description below. Obviously, uh, no obligation whatsoever. Um, all the tooling I've used and all that sort of stuff, and the, uh, the, uh, the 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 seals and everything that I've used on this uh, on this job, I will leave links to them in the description below as well. So you can you know head over there and get anything if you want to do this job yourself. Um, but yeah, nothing else left to say, guys. Other than, thank you very much for watching and uh, you all take care and I will see you for the very next video. Bye bye guys, thank you.